supposed to be here. All right, it's 6 p.m. We'll call the meeting to order. Open the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. My report basically has uh, been a couple tough weeks for the family. Thank you for everybody's uh, comments and concerns and condolences. Uh, just a couple things to note. We have, uh, and this will be down on our um, old business too, in regards to the city administrator search, the um, public meet and community meet and greet will be at 4 p.m. on uh, next Monday, a week from today, and uh, that will be at the at Green Roof. And then um, coming up on the 21st at 7 p.m., um, interesting uh, uh, event happening here will be the candidate forum for city offices. That's on October 21st at 7 p.m., and that will be a virtual um, forum. That's all I have, Councillor LeBeau. Um, we had our community working session and mm -hmm. our council working session, and then I also had a park and tree board meeting. All right, thank you, Councilmember Hertzberg. The same working sessions, and tonight we had public works. Okay, Councilmember Rinke. Nothing outside of the working sessions. Okay, Councilmember Gilmore. Uh, liquor board and park and tree board and the working session. All right, everybody's been busy except me. All right, then we do have a couple department uh, head reports. We'll start with Chief Sweeney from the fire department. All right, thank you very much. Um, I should be sure the microphone's in front of you there. Uh, yeah. Just one minute. <laughs> you came not prepared? I, I did, I wasn't prepared for this portion. Oh. I have it up here somewhere. <laughs> Uh, basically, as you can see, or maybe I won't be able to see. Can I see? I did not come prepared. Page 39. 39? There we go. I've got that on the screen. Sorry about that. I'm getting closer. Right on the back. To start with, we had uh, calls for the month of August the months of August, um, September. Uh, we had 22 medicals, two car accidents, three fire calls, uh, four alarms, um, one gas leak, one CO alarm, totaling a total of 33 calls. Uh, Jessica Stransky um, finished her EMR refresh, or her EMR training um, in August, I believe it was. And we currently have three spots to fill and Tim Miller had resigned in August 1st. Uh, the last two months of training were radio communications, um, we worked with drop tanks, mask fitting, hose testing, and we did a house burn at the Keller Farm um, last month. So it's been a busy last couple of months and everything's been going pretty smooth actually. So we do have four applicants right now for the um, positions on the fire department. Good, excellent. Any questions for Chief Swain? Okay, if not, thank you, um, Ron Morgan, Mr. Morgan. Okay, thank you. Out at the compost um, this weekend, we've seen some uh, very heavy usage out there. I'd like to thank all the residents for being diligent about not putting garbage out there. Um, the parks will be closing, starting to winterize them this week. We will keep the Veterans Park open until after next week, Monday. Um, as mentioned, there was a park board meeting. I guess our big item there was uh, working on the park comp plan and um, revamping some of the parking for the boats. And you have both the fishing people and uh, the shelter usage, it does get very crowded out there. So that is one of our concerns. Uh, leaf pickup again is on October the 24th. Um, crews will be out uh, sweeping streets the next week or so. Um, out at the airport, everything is full, and I do have one more person looking for a hangar at this point. And the RV dump, again, also will be closed uh, beginning this week. It will be open, but the water will be shut off. 
That's all I have. Any questions for Ron? If not, Belinda. I have very low to report tonight. Uh, COVID reporting has been done for September. <laughs> Our motor vehicle girls are starting the next phase of their training for the new MinDrive program that will roll out in November. And we will be open on the 31st from 10 to 3 for absentee voting. I think that's it. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Melinda? All right. Then we'll get into the consent agenda, which will uh, approval that will include um, approving the minutes from those four meetings on page one. On page two, the vouchers totaling $295,244.82. And we also have uh, to approve the attendance of Brad Melhop to the Minnesota Rural Water um, was in their uh, association uh, training coming up in a short while. They request to approve the DMT certification training for officers Haig and O'Brien. The refuse license from GFL Solid Waste Midwest LLC. And the uh, training requests for the SFST, which is the field sobriety testing and drugs that impair training for Officer O'Brien. So that is the consent agenda. Move to approve. Second. That was motioned by Hertzberg, seconded by Rinke. Is that right? Sure, otherwise I heard Alicia. I don't need the credit. But oh, I heard yeah. down here too, but okay. Oh, to Alicia. <laughs> Motion by Hertzberg, seconded by Lebeau. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That <coughs> carried. Hey, then the first item of new business comes from the fire department, and uh, we have a couple of members that have moved outside the eight minute uh, response time. And Chief Soini have taken this to the uh, members. They've approved waiving that, but it needs council ratification or approval, correct? Correct. I guess okay. I don't have anything additional to add. Yeah. How far <laughs> outside of that eight minutes are they? Uh, one of them currently is 11 minutes, and the other one is 12 minutes from the fire hall. So they both currently work in town. Um, one is taking over his father's business, so he is or working in his father's business. He has no intentions of going anywhere for a long, long time. <laughs> and the other one is actually planning on moving back to town. Just circumstances brought him out of town for the time being. I'll make the motion to waive the eight minute response time for Mike Chuck and Jason Schrantz and allow them to continue to serve on the Painesville Fire Department. Second. Motion by Lebeau, seconded by Ranky to waive the eight minute response time for Mike Chupp and J Jason Schrantz and allow them to continue to serve on the Painesville Fire Department. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That <coughs> carried. Thank and you. anything else from the Fire Department? Uh, nope. All right, then we'll move on. <laughs> Our building inspector, Brad, is here, and in regards to a hazardous condition of 509 Minnesota Street West, which has had a number of complaints and issues, and Over the years it take it, take over here. Okay, so this started last February. I met with the owners, or the owner, Faith. Um, I've just recently learned that she's been divorced for quite some time. Um, her name is now Faith Wagner, and she is, there's a significant other would be uh, uh, Elmer Miller. And I've been working with them both. Um, I met with them last February. They're well aware of the condition. They're also wanting the home to be removed, um, but financially, it's not it's not possible. So I gave, I'd given them a year to get their affairs in order. She's very ill, but I'd given them a year to come up with a plan. Um, things got expedited a little bit. Um, ended up getting called there on a fire call for a suspicion of gas leak. And, turned out to be just the smell of the home. Mm -hmm. So um, the back of the house is collapsed. The foundation is crumbling. It's full of mold. It's a real hazard. And I guess it, it, it needs to come down. Hope, I hope you will learn. So we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A number of pictures that are attached to the agenda and 
Yeah, so the pictures are each worth more than a thousand words. The picture on page 12, is the, that's right inside the front door. And you can see through that next door, that's what was the kitchen. Um, next page on page 13 would be what was the kitchen. 14 more was the You can see all falling into the basement there. Mold on page 16 in the bathroom. Foundation crumbling on page 17. On and on and on. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, a house that could be burned or not really? Well, there's some pretty close properties right near. I don't know if I feel comfortable in a situation like that. That would, that would save them the cost of it could unless we burn a neighbor's house down <laughs> that, that <laughs> really is not wrong we're better than that we got insurance for that <laughs> thick brush too we uh, would defer that answer to the yeah. chief of police or chief of fire department chief yeah, i would yeah. prefer not to burn that property i don't think it'd be a wise decision mm -hmm. Now you put in here that it would go, the cost would go on the property taxes? Right, so if the city assumes the demolition cost, then we would put it on our property taxes for payment. Mm -hmm. That's how we would get it paid for, so that the city doesn't incur that cost. And so there's, and don't maybe you can answer this question, so if they don't pay the property taxes, the city will get it back and we'll still be able to sell the lot and assess that. Yes, I mean, we'll, we'll assess it, you know, we'll assess it as the process is completed. We'll ask the court for an order authorizing the assessment of the taxes against the property. Um, they haven't been paying the property taxes recently, so I don't anticipate they'll get. I don't know if this is a situation where they'd be willing to just convey that property to the city or not. I mean, we haven't gotten very deep into that, but. Um, <coughs> There's, I, I did do some preliminary title work. There's there's a mortgage, a couple of mortgages, but they appear to be very old. I think they're probably not valid. Um, I made a preliminary call and got a little bit of information, but the bank was reluctant to tell me that. But they're, I I got copies of the mortgages and they're they're, they're quite old, so I think they're uh, expired technically. Uh, I'd rather have it be. I'd rather have the bank agree with me than to fight about it, but. Um, they're from the 90s and they were payable the next year. Title standards are, you know, if the mortgage is more than 15 years old from the date that it was due, that you can ignore it. So I think we're, we're pretty safe, but I'd rather, it's a local bank, I'd rather work with them than against them on this. But yeah, we don't want to tear on a house we don't own. Or they well, no, 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 yeah, that's right, that's right. If, they, if they've got a bell, we certainly need them to consent. I'll explore that further as we get into it, but I, I think we're okay. And at this point, we don't have an estimate what it'll cost to tear down. I've got phone calls and, and two different companies looking at it, but I haven't heard back yet. Because we could easily exceed the value of the lot. I'd be, I'd be surprised if you didn't. I mean, you, you know, you're, you're not, you don't do these things to make money. Right, but it would be nice to break you. No, I, I, mean, I, I, mean, so I wouldn't be a fairy tale. I wouldn't want to be a neighbor of that house neither, so we probably have to do what we have to do. I mean, you're doing it for public safety. It's not it's not a deal where, you know, I mean it'd be great if it'd be great even, but I I don't I don't think so. And if the taxes aren't being paid on it, that kind of is another argument there also and the, to ask to have the property conveyed to the city what would the cost be involved there because i suppose that's something the city would have to bear also well there's there's some things that have to be cleaned up mm -hmm. you know i look at the title it shows it in a husband and wife who are apparently no longer married but they've never reported anything so brad is telling me when they were forced the property was awarded to her that's what she's telling him. Um, but that the document that would have accomplished that's never been recorded. So, you know, we have somebody would have to get a certified copy and record that to get to straighten that little issue out. And then, then we've got the issue with the bank. So there's 
the couple little things that need to get squared away before you can talk about that. But if, if you know if she was willing to, if, if we got those two issues squared away, the advance wouldn't, wouldn't be that big of a deal um, in terms of expense. But it'd be it'd be much cheaper than going through the court process. Well, at this point, can we make a motion, or is it ongoing? Well, can we make a motion to continue on and find out who the ownership is and what the liability is going to cost us, and then come back to it? Well, uh, in the packet, there's a resolution mm -hmm. uh, for the council to consider to find this to be a hazardous building, yep. and that's that's really the starting point. Mm -hmm. the, the rest of this is kind of just talk at this point, but the the uh, the, the, the memo that, that uh, Brad prepared for you and the resolution are, are really the action items for, for tonight. So if the council agrees that this appears to be a hazardous building and is willing to approve that resolution, that will start the ball rolling. So did I understand correctly that if we approve this resolution, they then have 60 days to respond or to take some kind of action? And then after that, is there another step? What was the 30 days after oh, that? Is that in it? Well, I, I mean, the step, the step that I was going to take when, when Brad and I met and talked about this was I was going to have, uh, I was going to present the property owner with, uh, with a, an agreement authorizing the city to go ahead without the need to formally pursue a court action. But now I'm a little concerned because we've got these little title issues I needed to spend a little bit of time trying to work through that once the council approves the resolution to see if, if those things can all get worked out. If they can, we can verify the title was transferred to the one person instead of the two, so we only need one signature of an owner. You know, the, all those things, I, mean, I, I need to verify that all that's accurate, but I have no reason to doubt it, but it was, I just heard that tonight for the first time. So um, those are things that we need to verify. Uh, presumably there's a divorce file somewhere in Sermons County District Court that would have a, an order, I could get a certified copy, we could record it, that would get the title into the individual's name that we believe it's in, but, you know, Brad could talk to her, see if she'll do that, I suspect she won't, <laughs> I think, if we want to get that done, I think we're probably going to have to. Uh, so, it's just a question of how we want to proceed. Okay. Well, I need to learn more to know exactly what our options mm -hmm. are, but I always feel in these situations, it's good to get court orders to document that you have authority to go ahead. Even though you might get an authorization, I would probably still ask for the court to issue an order pursuant to the agreement. Um, so they, you, you end up with some kind of court process to back you up. Well, I move to approve uh, resolution 2020-19, ordering repair or removal of hazardous condition located at 509 Minnesota Street West in Paintsville. Second. Motion by Ricky, seconded by LeBeau to approve resolution 2020-19, ordering repair or removal of hazardous condition located at 509 Minnesota Street West, Angel, Minnesota. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. <coughs> that carried. All right. Thank you. On to old business. This is coming through previous meetings with the council here and um, trying to... Uh, consolidate some tasks as we make some uh, personnel <coughs> changes. Um, there's a number of different uh, statements on there. I'm not going to read through all those. I think the council is pretty familiar with those. They are listed there for the record on page 25. Um, one of the things we have to do is to uh, uh, get a letter of agreement signed between the city and AFSCME and then uh, Looking to uh, call back Randy Bertzold. Um, he did work for the city for a period of time, and he would be doing accounts payable for up to 20 hours a week, and then uh, moving uh, some other responsibilities around within existing staff, and then allowing some additional overtime for staff to help get us through some of the changes coming up. And it was mentioned by Linda earlier, the new system that the uh, DPS is putting out for 
licensing coming up in November, so we have a lot of uh, issues and tasks that need to be um, addressed, taken care of, and uh, switched around for personnel. And we, do, we did have to post internally for the um, temporary position of accounts payable. That goes through tomorrow. And Randy is going to get back to me to confirm his interest by tomorrow as well. So. I move to approve the letter of agreement between the city of Painesville and the AFSME union. Second. Motion by Rinke, seconded by Hertzberg, I believe I heard. Is that correct? Yep. To approve the letter of agreement between the city of Painesville and AFSME union discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, none. That carried. Make a motion to call back Randy Birchell to work in City Hall and do accounts payable only up to 20 hours per week through December 31st. The same grade and step he left at grade five and step three at the rate of 18.58 per hour for the 2020 safe scale. Second. Motion by Gilmore, seconded by LeBeau to call back Randy Birdsell to work in the City Hall and do accounts payable only up to 20 hours per week through December 31st at the same grade and step he left at, grade five, step three at a rate of $18.58 per hour per the 2020 safe scale discussion on that. I assume that needs to be made contingent on his acceptance and nobody internally applying? Yes. Okay. Hey, anything else? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, none, not carried. I'll make the motion to remove the DMV responsibilities from the city treasurer and administrative assistant zoning administrator position. Second. Motion by Hertzberg, seconded by Renke to remove the DMV responsibilities from the city treasurer and administrative and administrative assistant slash zoning administrator positions. Discussion on that. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That one carried. And? I'll move to allow overtime as necessary for the DMV staff to properly train for the rollout of Min Drive on November 16, 2020. Second. Motion by LeBeau, seconded by Hertzberg to allow overtime as necessary for the DMV staff to properly train for the rollout of Min Drive on November 16, 2020. Discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. And that carried. All right. Thank you there. I'll be looking for some changes there. The next thing is uh, on the uh, liquor license fee reduction that the uh, council has been looking at in regards to COVID-19. And uh, just to note before we uh, uh, proceed, we have had uh, two applications, one from Queen Bee's Bar and Grill and one from Painesville American Legion Post 271. Uh, we do have three Legion members that are on the city council here, and we have one that should be a Legion member. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and uh, Bill can clarify this, but uh, there should be no conflict of interest for the three that are members, because none of the members have any financial interest in whatever the, uh, the Legion does. They are only members of the American Legion and uh, hold no um, ownership positions in the post, the facility, or the bar, or whatever, correct? I would agree. All right. Then I will make the motion to refund Queen Bee's Bar and Grill Incorporated and the Painesville American Legion Post 271 in the amount of $2,400 each due to the effects of COVID-19. I'll second. Motion by LeBeau, seconded by Rinke to refund Queen Bee's Bar and Grill Inc. and the Painesville American Legion Post 271 in the amount of $2,400 each due to the effects of COVID-19. Discussion? Is there any user are COVID bills? funds for that? What? what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was starting to ask far end down here. What's the logic behind the dollar amount? The logic is um, we went with basically we just charged the eatery at 112 for a quarter of a year. So this is paying them back for three quarters of the year considering they were closed for a quarter of it. They have been partially opened ever since. Mm -hmm. So basically charging them for the January, February, March quarter. So they pay the same amount that the new restaurant account is being asked to pay in 2020. Okay. Okay, Can we use our COVID funds for this? I believe we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. That carried. 
And the last item of business under old business is uh, from our update, and we have the uh, kind of updated schedule of what is going on. And as I mentioned earlier, the community meet and greet at 4 to 6 p.m. on Monday. The rest of it's all detailed out there. We did have one dropout, so we're down to five. Is five now correct? Yes. Um, can I just ask, where are we advertising the meet and greet? Like, is that on the city web page and the city Facebook page and all those things? So, on um, the meet and greet flyer is sent to every committee um, member and every board member, every commission member. Um, it was sent to the press. Um, it is supposed to be on our Facebook page and our website. Okay. It was also sent to people like Phil, Chuck, um, Brian, um, Chamber, um, Otter, uh, County. Um, yeah, and it's supposed to be in the press. Okay. I this, just have this week. talked to some people about it and they hadn't heard, so I just wanted to make sure that we. Got it out there. Yeah, I actually sent those notices out to everybody on the boards and commission. Let's see. They were sent on October 2nd. Okay. That's when everybody should have got their invitation. Okay. And we will be operating under the uh, current uh, um, requirements, recommendations for COVID-19. Just to be sure to note that. And all the invitations do say that. Yep. Um, and both the EDAC and City Council, they will be published as special City Council meetings. Do you need a motion from us for the cost of the Legion? You know, I don't know exactly the amount, but I just wanted you to be aware of the cost. So, you know, we'll have to approve that voucher when it comes through. Um, you're, you know, you're welcome to, but I don't know for sure what those exact amounts are going to be for their what kind of potential folded. Can you do a blanket um, motion for the lunch for Monday and the lunch for Tuesday and the charge for $100? Well, um, we can, but, you know, also the city administrators, the, the co interim administrators do have a spending allowance also so we could allow that and then you know approve that as a council afterwards when the total is known and that's up to what three thousand five thousand now so the roof should be under that <laughs> um and then there'll be three people taking advantage of the hotel accommodation so i'll be making those um, reservations tomorrow Okay, we have no no action required. That's basically informational. There will be a, a tour. We'll be working on that. And Ron and Neil did some driving around and identified some places. And then we'll have to kind of tweak those down as to where we want to actually maybe stop and spend some time. Uh, one question I have is: Do you want the council members? that's on the EDAP board to be part of that panel interview on that one and also do the regular one? I believe as, as EDAP board members, you are welcome to be a part of that. Okay. Liza is aware that two council people serve on that board. Okay, all right, there, there's nothing else informational. We have the police department report for September. The note there that all the uh, city reports are always available on the web page. Notice there of the hearing coming up, Stearns County on October 15th, I believe it was, yep, Thursday, October 15th, in regards to a request for rezoning from uh, Jerome Humbert for J.C. Humbert, Inc., Painesville, Minnesota, and that is property that's just up before uh, Cronus, or uh, um, what used to be Ron and Judy's, kind of in that area off there, so. And that we checked and it doesn't fall within the, the uh, um, 
Order order an annexation agreement, so this did not happen. property that lies just in front of where the um, former community gardens were. Mm -hmm. It's that property there. Yep. Rezone from residential to uh, commercial zoning. So if you're interested in that, it's Thursday, October 15th at 6 p.m. at the Administration Center, St. Cloud. Anything else? Oh, correct. There also is the fire department report, as Andy didn't go through earlier. That's it for informational, and we are adjourned. Thank you.